just I just want nice things, wizards. Just want nice things. All right, Naya Naya token. So we've got um, green white tokens at the core with a a red splash, kind of for two cards. We've got Sky Knight Vanguard here, which creates a one one white soldier token tapped and attacking, as well as Ember Cleave, which while <coughs> our individual tokens aren't particularly large, our Woodland Champion, Lovestruck Beast, and Venerated Loxodon are all going to Ember Cleave. But those aren't the only two red cards we're playing. Splashing for Castle Embrith also seems very reasonable. A repeated Anthem effect to allow our tokens to punch through seems good. I did Bulletproof Pope, so hopefully, hopefully the zero downtime maintenance goes goes according to plan. Last, The last update actually updated for me without a hitch. So hopefully, hopefully this one does the same. Maybe a good substitute for Sky Knight Vanguard would be four islands because you can get them in foil. I did rotate my daily quest. I got another 500 gold one. Easy mulligan here. Did the stream cut out for anybody else? I've I'm not dropped any frames, so. Sacred Foundry on one. Let's be Castle Umbreth on two to play these, which is nice. Alright, can we can we race Golos Field? It's a good, it's a good, the Golos Field deck's like the litmus test for the format. If you can't, if you can't race this deck, you need to be able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with it. And a lot of things can't do that. Can you explain the paper tournament problems with Kenrith? I read a blurb, but I wasn't sure what they're talking about. So, if you've never experienced paper Magic the Gathering cards, the foils are incredibly low quality and curl to the point at which they are marked. <coughs> so the problem with Kenrith is that the buy a box card is going to be the most common copy of it most likely which only comes in foil now the real issue comes from the fact that you can't you can get non-foil copies in the special collector packs so the problem is that because non-foil copies technically exist Wizards judges cannot issue promo, cannot issue proxies for warped promos. Whereas with Nexus of Fate, all of them were only available in foil. So because they were only available in foil, judges were allowed to, by the rules of magic, issue proxy cards for them. But that that's not the case with Kenrith because non-foils technically exist but non-foils will likely be prohibitively expensive. Thankfully, I'm really glad that Wizards of the Coast waited for the first playable buy a box promo to rotate out before immediately printing another playable buy a box promo. That was, that was really nice of them to wait, wait for that to happen. No, it is not up to the discretion of the head judge. It is against the magic tournament rules for sanctioned tournaments to allow proxies to be used for cards that have non-foil versions in, in circulation. It's nothing, nothing to do with discretion and everything to do with the rules of tournament magic. From, from my experience playing standard so far, Kenrith seems like a very constructed playable card. It is very bad. It is not a good look as they say. It is, that's a, it is an incredibly dumb problem to have for a paper game. Good job, Watsi, is a good, is a great, couldn't have said it better myself. I think it's too expensive for the return. 
I think if I was looking for like, I think if I was looking for a card that was good against traditional control, a card like Outlaw's Merriment would be what I would play. But I also think traditional control is very bad in this format because it struggles greatly with this Oko or with this field, Golo's field deck. So maybe the format shakes out to a point where traditional control is playable and then that card would be good. But unless that happens, I wouldn't, uh, wouldn't hold my breath. That's not a terrible draw. Next turn we'll go. Raise into Loxodon. It's 2019. Are there really no ways to make cards shiny without making them illegal for to their own freaking tournaments? Uh, there are. Other, other card games manage it. They just like, in order for another card game to manage it, they have to have things like quality control. Uh, Ember Cleave might actually mean we can race them here. So I need I this is a this is a touch awkward. I need to keep one of these a 1-1. One, one, so that way I can attack with Lovestruck Beast next turn. Yeah, Pokemon TCG has a bunch of different foils. Yes, Neo Show Brand was yesterday. The day before, no, it was two days ago. It was Tuesday. <clears throat> so they get two zombies here. Uh, depending on how they block this turn, we can kill them. So if I attack like this and they go block, block here, they die. Sounds good. <clears throat> Are you ready? Ember Cleave is ready. Are they dead regardless? No, they're, they we're short. We're a couple short, right? Oh, if I would have, okay. So I should have counted better. If I would have counted better, I would have counted that. Attacking with this was lethal. The more you know. We're about to get time wiped and then cry. Yeah, I deserve this loss. All right, and again, this is why you don't focus on the results of my games. You should focus on what happens in them and think about the decks critically. So I don't I don't really care about winning this specific ladder game, right? So like if I was actually doing testing, like I'd be like, oh, this deck got a game win here, so I was one and one in this matchup. That's a, that's an important distinction I think enough people don't do. Da -da -da -da. Thank goodness this is a no justice stream. Have I mentioned that you should be playing four questing beasts in all of your decks that make green mana? Have I have I mentioned that you should have four questing beasts? in all of your decks that make green mana. Even if they don't seem like a good main deck fit, put four in the board. What is your quest? I seek the face. QB, QB runs the ball down across, across the, across the finish line there. See, it's not good enough, right? <clears throat> I think it's not good enough. Just kind of slow. This hand's great. 
needs needs a land, but super reasonable. If we hit, if we, hit, if we, hit, if we hit land three four on time, this hand should be great. Okay. We put an Ember Cleave on a Questing Beast yet. We've not. I think this is our first deck playing both of those cards together. I'm glad I don't play Paper Standard. Questing Beast is $18 and Oko is almost $40. Yep. And that, those prices are another important thing to remember about like the SCG Open this weekend. Like, you need to remember that a significant number of the people that play the SCG Open this weekend are going to not be playing their deck of choice because their deck of choice costs too much money to build. Is a, a very, very real consideration for those tournaments. Is it crazy to just pass and then like raise plus march, get four tokens at end of turn? I can also attack for three and then like play Woodland Champion. I'm gonna attack for three and play Woodland Champion, I think. I'm like trying to think about like what, what sucks. Why would I do that? That gives me one less token later, Dirty Digits. Like, using this to make one token seems bad. <clears throat> that bodes well. Really? That's... That's a line? Uh, I just made a huge mistake, um, and it's a very subtle mistake. I should have made one token here to put them to three, so that way Questing Beast was lethal with one attack. I should have, I should have made a token here to put them to three, so that way one Questing Beast hit was lethal. Alright, apparently they kept a garbage hand and died. But, important again, don't focus on the results, focus about the details. So like that, that was a mistake there, even though we won. This is, this is a no justice stream. Would it be worth it to put Questing Beast in the main for best of one? Definitely. Questing Beast is is uh is Broco like Oko. Seems good. Lost the die roll. Garbage. We're trash trash magic player. Lost the die roll. Ember, Ember Cleave and our otherwise uh our otherwise green white deck looking a little a little awkward. And do they have shock in their deck? 
I'm gonna be a little tilted if this gets shocked. Never been a fan of standard, but this format looks fun. And with college started, I'm happy to watch more of your stuff. Ban the ape. Ain't that right, Grandpa Mason? Thanks for keeping me around. Hope you're having a good one wherever you are. So next turn, I get to go raise the alarm plus, uh, plus venerated Loxodon. Oh, yeah, that's a good observation. They were getting priority without mana, so it's once upon a time. All right. Who's got... Who's got two thumbs and dies to a giant sweeper next turn? This guy right here. This dojo does not contain fear. All right, all right, maybe a little, maybe a little bit of fear. Should have, narrator, there was a small amount of fear. And like, if you're, if you're looking at a deck like this, you're going, how do I make this deck better against five mana sweepers? The answer is play a different deck. The goal, the goal of a deck like this is you're supposed to run them down before they have it. Occasionally, you're going to have hands that allow you to like have a questing beast as a follow-up or something like that where you can kill them after the sweeper. But a lot of the time, you're just going to die. That's just how magic works. And if you want to play a deck that's not just going to die to a sweeper, I'd recommend finding one of the other decks in the format that doesn't do that. To be fair, that doesn't work, dude. Like, because they just played a five mana sweeper on turn four. And killing them. Killing them on turn three is not an option in standard, generally speaking. <clears throat> My team erect deck dies on turn three of my opponent plays three mana Tefri. Have you tried more fry? I think I heard fried Tefri is pretty good this time of year. <clears throat> it's a good lesson that I find all the time in mo with modern players. How do I make my team or mid range deck competitive against Tron? Play Infect or Storm. Yep. Yep. And ain't that the truth? <clears throat> Have you tried? Have you considered a different deck? So, uh, this is my opponent's second turn. So, like, my start's very good. But, you know. Now, depending on what they do here, like, if they just do very little, this might be, a, like, if they just pass here, I think this is a game where we can probably afford to try and play around a sweeper. Because I... I feel like with the board I already have in play, my opponent kind of needs to sweep. So I don't think I'm going to add more pressure to the table this turn. Like I'm not going to commit the Loxodon. I'm just going to go ahead and attack with what I have. Because that way if they sweep at end of turn, a sweep on their next turn, I can go raise the alarm, untap Loxodon, have some pressure left over. And then depending on their leftovers, we might have a chance. Now, there are games like that, la like this first one we played in this set where I was just like, all right, I have to make them have it because I can't really afford to play around anything where sometimes they have it and you die. But a game like this where I've assembled pressure to beat what they already have, I can n not overcommit, basically. And that, that means I can definitely beat a sweeper here. I hope. Again, sorry. Let's not say definitely. Let's say very likely beat a sweeper. Because end step, end step, raise the alarm, untap questing beast, smash you is like... Yeah, and like this chump block here likely means that they're sweeping. <clears throat> I 
So like, if they sweep, I'm gonna untap and attack for six, which is like pretty reasonable. And if they don't, if they don't sweep here, so like if they Golos like this, I think I'm gonna go ahead and push. <clears throat> Uh, we finished three and two. We died to we died to Tron or we died to Urza. I think I want a third collector oof in the seventy five. Maybe another rest in peace. All right, the fact that they're not taking chump blocks aggressively at the Golos hopefully means they don't have a sweeper. It could mean they're just trying to like, they're trying to draw the sweeper with Golos too though, right? Like Golos, Golos lets them draw three cards next turn. So probably dead here. I know we won this matchup in the first match that we played, but this deck kind of feels like the, the hero deck that we played where I feel like aggressive decks that aren't starting with a lot of one drops are just not fast enough to be competitive in this format. The the amount of the amount of ramp that they have just feels like feels like you're just not competitive enough. You just can't can't consistently get under them. Like we were we were on the play that game and we were much too slow. You can cast either half of an adventure card off of Golos. Uh, Standard almost always has this many sweepers. Um, legal, but in terms of playable, yeah. And a big part of that is like, they've been making an effort to make sweepers cost more mana or be more restrictive. And the fact that there's so much good ramp in the format right now means the means that the sweepers costing more mana is mostly irrelevant. Man. <sighs> Sometimes life is life is truly stranger than fiction. Did any of the other Americans or not out there see that Trump tweeted a Joe Biden meme with a Nickelback song in it? And if that if that wasn't the weirdest part about that tweet, Nickelback apparently filed filed the takedown notice with Twitter and it got taken down. This media has been disabled in response to a report by the copyright owner. That like the fact that the tweet the tweet got posted in the first place was like we are we are truly it is the darkest timeline strickles just like the fact that it got posted go go Nickelback like I want I want everyone who grew up in the who was a teenager in the early two thousands to consider now that Trump is our president and Nickelback is the hero of the story. This like up is down, down is up. It's all, it's all just weird. It's just weird. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, it feels like a Black Mirror episode. <coughs> the onion must cry themselves to sleep. These headlines, yeah, they, how do they keep up? Thanks for the 12 months to support Just a Box. Let's get you a sword to go with that shield. Like what are what are they even supposed to do about that? Oh, all right, what are we doing? So if I play If I play this and then I raise the alarm next turn, I don't have enough to do this. So I think I'm gonna lead on Sky Knight Vanguard. And then next turn I can go tap land, raise the alarm into Amara Loxodon on four. The subreddit R not the onion is doing well right now. You're not wrong.
Another Field of the Dead deck. With Boros Guild Gate is interesting. I'm sure you can still find the meme in other places, it's just not on Trump's timeline anymore. The other, the other thing to consider is that if Trump wasn't Trump, his Twitter account probably would have been banned a long time ago for some of the stuff he posts. Or at least would have been given a couple of timeouts. There's a lot of... There's a lot of wrong in the world, but that that's a little bit of right. He but he does bring engagement. Yep, he makes a lot of money. Hate, hate, hate generates clicks. All right, so I'm doing this. What if I, do we just go all in? If I play this land I make five tokens with this, and then this can pump up those five tokens. I think, I think we just go all in, right? Because X is four here, and then this makes an extra one. This is again like, can I, can I beat a sweeper? The answer is no. So, wrath me daddy. Uh, so turn four, I have 10, 14, 17, 18, 19. I have 20 power on turn four. <clears throat> just keep swimming, swimming, swimming. Just keep swimming. Doot, doot, doot. Oh yeah, I would I would be floored to Moe's if someone if they hadn't tried to give him a social media manager at some point. I would be floored. Especially especially when he treats retweets like random conspiracy theories and stuff. We've not played Esper Dance yet. This will be our first time playing it up next. I was at a computer security conference. It was in a session about Twitter bots. The speaker showed a map of the world and it showed every time Trump tweeted, the Russian part of the map just lit up with not with not at far with farms replying to him. Not really news anymore, but like all of Twitter is bots. A lot of it is bots. A lot of a lot of it is bots. A lot of it, a lot of it is bots created to make people feel hostile towards other people around them. And to be fair, they're doing a very good job at that. What was it? I heard, I read, I read a good line in response, response to what it, it might've been the Nickelback tweet. Actually, it was at this point, only idiots and millionaires are, are supporting Trump. Double check your bank account. If you're not sure which one you are, it was like, yep, yeah, that's, that's a good line. Going to use that one in the future. No, the Vanguard token enters play tapped and attacking. So I couldn't attack with that token. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely bots are created to argue with each other is definitely something that happens as well. So again, just make it like, look like things are more hostile and animosity than they are. Yeah, those, those people fall under idiots, dude light. I file them, I file them solidly under the idiot banner. People, people who don't understand that they're being swindled and used uh, fall under the idiot banner.
If you don't, if you don't understand the, the con, the, he's a con man, you're the mark. <sighs> single, single issue voters are the GOP's bread and butter. Didn't get wrathed on five, fist pump. Our adventure cards on the overlay too now? God bless, look at that. Deck Master finally works. We have tokens too, that's exciting. Tristani does turn off the beast. We're not playing her. All right. Castle's like decent there. This is the part where we get wrath now. Really? Still no wrath. Okay. This is uh this is the part where an ember cleave draws super live, huh? Or or their sequencing's just bad. Looks like looks like their sequencing was just bad. Oh, they could have drawn it off the growth spiral. Well, they should still growth spiral before playing their field, right? So their sequencing is still not good. Yeah, I love how every time that animation comes up, the people are just like, whoa. Yeah, raise, then march. This is for three, right? So here's, here's an interesting question for you, Bandit Time. Can you give me an example of an issue that you say you, you think means you lean right? Because a lot of the time when I've, people, when people tell me they lean right and that I actually push them a lot of the time, the things they're talking about that they respond with that they think are right-leaning issues aren't really. You're, you're welcome not to engage as well, but I'm curious as to what you what you envision as a right-leaning issue that you support. So all of our threats are lethal next turn, thanks to Castle. So hopefully they don't have another Giant Sweeper. Basically, I think the whole... I don't even think the whole political spectrum in our in the U.S. is so messed up that people think think that people think up is down. Well, they're currently still dead on board. Not anymore. We have five blockers now. Ember Cleave still lethal as always. That card's great. Yeah, yeah, I agree, Katsu. American politics are heavily right skewed. If you if you're in the United States and you view yourself as a centrist, you're actually on the right side of the political spectrum. That's just that's just the truth. Yeah, yeah, so fiscal responsibility is the one thing people generally like, wave their arms about and talk about when you talk about right-leaning issues. Right, right-leaning issues. And like fiscal responsibility is not, is not a, like if you look at, if you look at the map of how uh, money is spent based on when Democrats are president, when Republicans are president, you'll realize that, like, that's not actually a conservative principle, or it's not a Republican principle. Uh, 
extra special. Of course, Squid Squad, happy birthday. Let's try one more time. So we're one and two against Golos Field decks. That matchup does not feel good. We just have too many hands where we can't get underneath them. It's important to vote no matter if it's Republic, Democrat, or something. It's important to vote and be informed. And facts, facts and being informed tend to have a liberal bias because reality has a liberal bias. Smaller governments, more states' rights. But that's that's not a that's not a Republican thing. Republicans are very anti-states' rights. Republicans are states' rights when it suits them, as exemplified by the recent emissions pushback that California was trying to pass. So, like again, the de the devil's in the details, and important being being informed is important is important. All of all of the all of the, the people want to spend money on crap. I just like that the Democrats want to spend money on like, you know, health care and early childhood education and stuff like that, as opposed to tax breaks for the wealthy and other other nonsense. And new, yeah, new military spending, right? Oh, geez, what did I miss? There are a lot of incorrect political talk. I'm banning you. Get out of here. You're not welcome here. That that's not welcome. You know what? You're you're not you're not new here. You know what's never welcome in my channel? Hey Jeff, you're wrong, but I'm not explaining why. Fuck off. That's not welcome here. It's not welcome with regards to magic, and it's definitely not welcome with regards to things with as important as politics. I'm wrong constantly. Ask my wife. But you know what? If you're gonna tell me I'm wrong, you better tell me why. Or you're not welcome here. Don't let the door hit you in the backside on the way out. You're wrong all the time, Jeff. Oh, if I'm wrong all the time, it should be really easy to point out how I'm wrong all the time. It's always weird, though, how when you push the people who are like, you do this thing all the time, and you're like, can you give me examples of when I do that thing? Because that sounds bad. I'd like to not do that. And they're just like, just crickets for as far as the ear can hear. And I get that it's the internet and some of you are typing from cell phones and it's, it's hard to write a meaningful and engaging response sometimes on some of these things that you're writing on. But guess what? You could also just not type a response. You know what's easier than just saying you're wrong with no justification? Keeping your goddamn mouth shut. If you're gonna engage, engage. If you're not going to engage, bugger off. And that's, that's where people who are really lazy when they're trying to look for justifications of why they don't like me, they're like, Jeff can't accept when he's wrong. It's, no, I can accept when I'm wrong. I just expect a justification for why I'm wrong. I don't, I don't just roll over like a bad dog and say, yeah, you're right. That was wrong because you said it was wrong. I'm an adult with a brain in my head who can engage in actual points of t conversation. Well, you know... Yeah, yeah, I, um, I was reading an article about how, um, truckers really 
really got uh, kind of screwed on the tax change because like the tax rate is lower overall for them, but their amount of deductions changed significantly. So they all lost money on average. I try to be nice to people here because I treat it like Jeff's house, but that was a delight. Thanks to Norca. You think we should put alligators or crocs on the border? I think my favorite border wall thing was when he was standing at the border wall and he was like, why don't you explain how they're wired? And the general was like, you know, sir, there might be merit to not explaining that. <laughs> Just, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was, it was very good. All right. Uh, I think we're just double raising the alarm here, right? Go grab a second red in case we draw an ember cleave down the line. Two weeks ago, I donated some subs for a job interview. In two weeks, I start a new job. Coincidence? I think not. Hey, congrats on landing the gig, Pollens, and thanks for the prime support and the other support. I got a Twitch ad. Thanks for the 17 months, Roth. Welcome back. Man, this card, this card screws this card too. That's such a tilt. We're like 100% getting Wrath next turn, right? Just like not close. Arena's not supposed to have downtime. It's supposed it's supposed to be a zero downtime update. Listen, this mouse has survived thousands of hours of Counter-Strike source and uh, the original Guild Wars and then lots of arena and streaming and all that. It's going to be it's going to be okay. Uh, I have a Logitech MX510. It's almost old enough to drive. Uh, I lost the only match that I played. I played the black, I played the black green deck and uh, I played the black green deck and that deck's not very good against ramp and that's what I got paired into. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't have a lot of money growing up. So like we had crappy computers, but we we couldn't afford a fifteen dollar a month subscription to World of Warcraft. So we played we played games you could buy once and then play forever. I didn't ask for an alligator boat. I asked for a quote on how much it would cost. <laughs> Thanks for the two months, Derzerter. I appreciate the support. Welcome back. Good to have you here in Oglandia. It's just like gets another sweeper. I mean, we we played a lot of Guild Wars. To be to be fair, we played we played a lot of Guild Wars. All right, um, man, Love Struck Beast is pretty bad here. Hanged Executioner is kind of bad too. Maybe I just bring in Tristani because it's like a single. It's an army in a can. <clears throat> This, this card is like a card where it just feels awkward so much of the time. Because, like, I feel like it's super obvious when you're setting up to cast this card. And then they wrath you anyways. And then it, and then it costs so much mana that you can't make enough tokens for it to be meaningful. We played a lot of Diablo 2 growing up, too. I did not play any Guild Wars 2. By the time, by the time that came out, we were... My my friend group had like aged out of that type of thing. Or not aged out of it, but like we had moved on to other things. Aged out's the wrong word. Yeah, this is probably the last match. This uh I really feel like playing decks that have aggressive slants that aren't starting at one drops just are, don't feel very competitive in this format, in my experience so far. Window head, thank you for the very generous tier two resub. And for the seven months at that, be sure to take a peek at the deck queue and let me know if there's anything there you'd like to bump up and see a bit sooner. Yeah, I just I just feel like unless your deck starts at, at one drop creatures and has a bit of reach or like good haste threats in addition to reach usually, 
Um, you're just like having trouble closing or like some kind of planeswalker like like three mana Chandra is a great card right now because it's a card that lets you be aggressive while also um while also like not extending into a wrath which is nice Augustella thanks for re-upping that prime support welcome back speaking speaking of questing beast This card's been gas in everything we've played it in, though. There's probably a great, a great version of this. There's probably a great deck with this card in it somewhere. The red, red, black knights deck we've been playing. It's been very reasonable. You like the green? Yeah, I like the green blue henge deck more than the green black one too. I replaced the the henge list on my website that I'm recommending with uh with that build. Towards Red Black Knight, 10 out of 10, window head. Will do. Speaking speaking of Embercleave. I should make that one happen tomorrow, I believe. Girl Monsters. Yeah, Girl Monsters seems good. We so we played a teamer, a teamer fires deck yesterday, and fires was poop. But it made me think that maybe a teamer deck that's just like green, red, hay sky splash oko could be okay. Could see that being reasonable. Yeah, it's for each creature attacking. All right, yeah, I'm off this. Team without Knuckle Blade. Yeah. He's also one of the people that you say are rightly. The yeah, just I feel like most people. Yeah. We'll be entering maintenance soon. All right. Well, let's take a peek at this one. So, yeah. Basically, just... I feel like we can tell what's going to be reasonable in terms of aggro decks, in terms of where their curve starts. And something that this token-style deck has done where it's felt like it's really struggled recently is I feel like it's kind of trying to do too many things. Because, like, this is kind of aggressive with stuff like Embercleave, but then cards like March the Multitudes aren't really that aggressive, right? Like taking a turn off to generate a big turn with something like this is like not really where you want to be. And I feel like just Love Struck Beast as a one drop is not enough one drops to be consistently good enough to be running people down in this format. Well, unless you have a bunch of haste or reach or something like that to follow it up. And this deck just doesn't do that basically. So this one, this one was a bit of a miss for me. Up next, we're going to be playing a deck that people have been asking about a lot. So we have um, Esper, Esper Dance coming up next. Condense if you want to. Before we dance, I'm going to take a quick ad break right now. All right. So when we get back, we're going to play some Esper and then uh, hang tight. Hopefully, hopefully the arena update goes out smoothly.